Hi everyone. Let's take a look at this budgeted income statement and support problem. It's problem 21-3b and it's rather a long one. It's one that would take me quite a bit of time to write out in Excel and that would make this uh, presentation too long. So instead I'm going to talk you through it and illustrate the solutions as I go. Alright, the budget director of Safety Athletic Inc. with the assistance of the controller, treasurer, production manager, and sales manager has gathered the following data for use in developing the budgeted income statement for January of 2008. Okay, now, then we have all this data. We have estimated sales data at 3,500 units, 6,800 units, and um, what we think we're going to sell the batting helmet and the football helmets for. We've got an estimate of inventories. Let me slide on down here. We've got some indication of direct materials. Um, and the estimate of inventories, by the way, is beginning and end of year. We've got some anticipated cost of purchasing data. And we have some direct labor requirements, factory overhead requirements, estimated operating expenses, and there's other income as well. Now, I'm not going to read all of these. What I'd if you need to, pause the tape so you can um, read it and get familiar with the data. And then we have the instructions. And the first one is to prepare a sales budget for January. Okay, well I'm going to slide back up to the sales data, which is part A, 3,500 units and 6,800 units. Now let's switch over and take a look at how we put that together. Okay, so in part one you see the solution in front of you. We simply would multiply to the left of my mouse the sales unit volume times the unit price of the two products added together and we would generate sales. The next thing they ask us to produce is the production budget. Okay, now in this area they tell us what the beginning inventory is and they tell us what the desired inventory should be at the end of the month. We're only going to prepare a budget for one month, right? So they tell us exactly what we should have, or what they hope to have in direct materials and in finished helmets. Okay, they also give us some data on the cost of purchases. Let's go take a look at the solution to Part B. Okay, so part or I'll say Part B, it's actually number two. We put together the production budget and we start off with the sales information of the quantities from above, right? That $3,500 and that $6,800 show up here and here. And then we have to add the desired ending inventory to come up with the total units we need to account for. And then if we subtract out what the beginning inventory was, we can come up and calculate the units to be produced. Okay, now I've jumped jumped back down to the instructions. We've taken care of number one and number two. Number three says prepare a direct materials but purchases budget. Well, we've calculated how much we need to produce. Now we need to know something about the direct material costs. And um, we get that information right here. We also get some information on the cost of purchases and beginning and ending inventory of direct materials. Let's jump over and take a look at how we would tackle number three. Okay, here's the solution to three now. Now, if this is going too fast, again, pause the tape, read the problem, and then I think the solution will make more sense. But here we put the direct materials purchase bu budget together. We rely on the units required for production, and I believe we calculated that from above, 4164 and 1735. Or, I'm sorry, total units to be produced is 34.70 and 67.60. Uh, uh, but we need to calculate how much of the plastic and foam lining we need. So we use that 34.70 and 67.60 and we multiply it times the, um, the pounds required in terms of plastic and uh, um, pounds required in terms of foam lining, right? So we can follow the little footnotes here is how we come up with the batting helmet amount, 
how we come up with the foam lining, and then for the football helmet, the same two, um, the same raw ingredients, right? And then we consider what the desired ending inventory is. We come up with the total to account for, back out the estimated units of inventory that, that uh, were existing, and we determine the exact quantity of units we need to purchase. Then we multiply it times the purchase price, and we come up with our direct materials purchases budget. We do it. We would have to do this for every raw, com raw component we would use, add it up, and we come up with the total direct materials to be purchased. Okay, now I've moved down to concentrate on number four to the left of my mouse, which is prepared direct labor cost budget. And after we've done one through three, particularly determining how many units we're making, determining the direct labor cost is a pretty straightforward exercise when we have a relatively simple manufacturing process. So let's find the direct labor costs. And here it is. Uh, molding department takes 0 0.2 hours at 14 per hour. Assembly takes 0.5 hours at 12. And the football helmet um, is 0.3 hour at 14 and 0.65 hours. Now, this is telling us what the direct labor requirement is per batting helmet and per football helmet. So let's jump over at the solutions and see how we would use that to come up with the direct labor requirements. Okay, so now you've got the solution on the screen. And we need 694 molding department to make the bolt, uh, to make the batting helmet. And we need 1735 of the assembly. Well, how did we come up with that? We multiplied the units we need to produce times the hours that we need. And then we do that the same for the football helmet based on the labor hour requirements that we know about safety athletic and corporate's production uh, d production capabilities, right? Add up all the total hours, multiply, there's the total hours, multiply times the total rate, and we come up with the total direct labor cost for each department, sum them together, and we know the total direct labor cost for the month of January we expect to pay. Okay, now back to the instructions. To the left of my mouse, it says prepare a factory overhead cost budget for January. Okay, well, up above here on the screen, you see the costs already. Sales, uh, oh, these are the operating costs. Let's look at the overhead cost. Right here we have indirect factory wages, depreciation of plant equipment, power and light, insurance and property. So those are estimated factory overhead costs. I think that may be all that we have. So let's jump back over and look at how we would put that together. Yeah, and we would simply sum up what we think those costs are and that's what we think the overhead cost would be. Okay, really straightforward in this particular problem. I'll slide on down. We'll tackle number six. Prepare a cost of goods sold budget for January. Work in process at the beginning of January is estimated to be twelve five hundred. Work at the end is the thirteen five. Okay, now this one will take you some time because you got to think through a lot of pieces of information. All right, we see the cost of goods sold budget. They gave us the dollar amount that we had in inventory, right? And the reason we know that is because we had battery helmets of 270 times $32, 8640. We had football helmets of 400 at $52 each, so we can add those together to compute the 29440, which again shows up right here. Then we add in the beginning work in process, which is given. We figure out what's the direct materials we need to purchase. And uh, that 8260 um, shows up here, and it's a result of the 900 plastic we needed to buy, the 490 of foam lining, okay? Then we add in the direct material purchases, which we've already um, uh, calculated to come up with the total cost of direct materials available for use. From there, we would back out the direct materials and in inventory at the end of the period. That's that 10560 right here, and we would calculate that by um, taking the 1240 desired ending inventory times 7 bucks and the 470 foam lining times $4, okay? I'm just reading from here, so you can see how we get it. Add those two together, we come up with the 10560. 
when we subtract the 10,560 from 217 cost of direct materials available, we wind up with cost of direct materials placed in production, in this case $206,440. Add in direct labor, add in factory overhead, which we've computed on other schedules, we come up with total manufacturing costs. Okay, then we add the total manufacturing cost to the work in process, we get a subtotal of what the work in process would be during the period. Then we would subtract out what we expect to have an ending work in process, and we, and we are able to calculate the total cost of goods manufactured. Recognize that the cost of goods manufactured relates to a different level of activity than what we sell. Okay, so what we have to do then is take the beginning finished goods inventory, at, add in the cost of what we made to come up with the total finished goods available for use, back out the ending finished goods, and then that's how we can generate cost of goods sold. Now, the only number I glazed over was this 27,960, so let me slide down. What we did to come up with the ending finished goods is we anticipated having 240 helmets at a cost of $34 in ending inventory and $360 at $55. Now, if any of this goes too fast, pause the tape or go back, maybe take a screenshot of the problem itself and make sure you can say, oh, I understand where that number comes from. Okay, so that's how we got to the 27960 and that gets us to our cost of goods sold. All right, now in 7 and 8, we get to the last two items, which is prepare a selling and administrative expense budget for January. Well, we have all these selling and administrative expenses here, so I think all we need to do is add them up. Let's take a look. Okay, so here's the solution, and what we've done is we've taken those items and broken them into the categories of which ones are selling, which ones are administrative, and we add them up. Uh, putting together budgets isn't doesn't get involved with debits and credits, right? It's very much um, financial statement oriented, and we're we're not concerned with debits and credits. Add the two up, we get five forty eight three hundred. Then the last problem was put the income statement together, and this really is just assembling the data that we've already put together. We already did a sales budget to tell us revenue from sales. We had a very complicated schedule and sub schedules to get us cost of goods sold. Then we can generate gross profit by subtracting cost of goods sold from revenue. We just completed the operating expenses above, right? The 448 and the 100, so those show up here and here. We come up with total operating expenses, right? And then from there we can get income from operations. Moving on down the income statement, and I slid it up a little bit just to position it a little bit better. We would um, have to add in any interest revenue we would have, back out any interest expense, and then from there we can come up with in income before income taxes. Um, if we have a stated income tax expense rate, we would multiply the income before income tax times that effective income tax rate, subtract that from income before tax, and we derive net income. And that is this problem, everyone. Thank you.